All right, everyone, uh, uh, thank you for joining us today. I'm Lieutenant Raul Javel with the LAPD's Media Relations Division. We're here to give you a, a little update on the investigation here, but on the part of the investigation that deals with the assistance that our city departments and uh, leaders have been provided to the community members here and also what's at, still in the works. All uh, right, here with me today is uh, um, Ms. Uh, Carol Parks, she's the Assistant General Manager of the Emergency Management Department of the City of Los Angeles. Also here is uh, Michael Hoffman, Special Agent in Charge of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives. Also here is Commander Ruby Flores, who is currently the Incident Commander of this incident at this point in time. Additionally, we're joined by uh, B. Signs from the American Red Cross. Uh, at this point, I'd like to have Ms. Carl Parks uh, provide some comments. Ms. Parks. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Carol Parks with City of Los Angeles Emergency Management Department. Our department, along with other city and county agencies, are working by the hour to assess the situation and the needs of the residents and the businesses that were impacted by this incident. We realize that there are some residents who have been displaced and shelter has been opened for their needs. And also we are working to open a local assistance center. Uh, details will be forthcoming, but today currently readily available, we have information at our internet site, which is emergency.lacity.org. At that website, residents and businesses that were impacted by this incident can go and find out about um, individuals and businesses and uh, other resources that are currently available to them right now. We realize that this is, situation is still under investigation and once residents are able to reassess and reoccupy uh, their homes and their businesses, we will be able to provide more services for them. But at this time, it's still an active investigation, so we want to allow the experts, the time to do their investigation, and we as a city family are supporting our residents. We're working with Councilman Curran Price's office, we're working with the mayor's office to ensure that the city and all of these support agencies are available 24 7 to help those impacted by this event. Thank you, Ms. Parks. I'd like to call a uh, special agent in charge, Mr. Michael Hoffman. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Michael Hoffman. I'm the Assistant Special Agent in Charge for ATF here in Los Angeles. Last night and today, our national response team members from around the country uh, arrived here on the scene. And the national response team are true experts in the field of arson and explosive investigations. These guys are truly the best of the best. And so they uh, arrived on scene today and began to methodically map the uh, area of the explosion behind us. They did aerial shots. Uh, you may have seen throughout the day, they've also had camera systems uh, to map the entire area. What we are trying to do at this point uh, to support getting folks uh, back into their residences is to shrink the footprint of the actual scene. As you might be aware, the scene expanded several blocks. And just this afternoon, we recovered the 500 pound uh, lid to the total containment vessel. And this item was located in somebody's yard approximately three or four blocks away. That item has been towed to the scene here uh, for further analysis. Uh, further, we are gathering additional pieces of evidence in the neighboring streets, as well as removing some of the vehicles here that are on the scene. Uh, we are towing some out, some that cannot be driven, and others we are permitting the residents to come in and get their vehicles. Uh, we are also cognizant uh, of the fact that many residents uh, have to get into their residence to get uh, medications and other important items. ATF, along with the police and fire department, are escorting those people into their residences to retrieve those items. We do not have a timeline as to how long this is going to take. Keep in mind that it takes a long time to do a scene like this uh, 
methodically and exactly. So we are going to be working throughout the weekend, uh, through the holiday, and uh, into early next week. Uh, beyond that, I do not have any timeline as to when we are going to be totally complete with this uh, investigation and with this scene. This is a, now we have uh, a Commander Ruby Flores, who is the, currently the incident commander here at this incident. Good afternoon, everyone. Commander Ruby Flores, I'm the incident commander for this incident. Um, as you've heard, we've had um, certainly a, a supportive role, but um, a primary role in um, taking initiative to communicate with our community with and through our city partners. Uh, we have certainly uh, been met with a, a few different residents that have come to the location of which our officers have been accommodating and facilitating their movement through the perimeter so that they can retrieve certain items. Uh, this is a joint effort with fire department and with ATF who have been excellent partners in identifying what the needs are of our community so that we can facilitate those needs from medication items to clothing uh, to certain things that they may need in their home. So we're doing every, every, um, you know, every effort is being made to accommodate and facilitate this movement of our, for our residents. Uh, nobody has been turned away. Uh, we have not, um, been able to, to not provide for anyone that has come to our to our attention. So I would continue to say that anyone that is affected by this in terms of um, living in the location or that has a vehicle here, we are more than happy to make sure that, that they are getting what they need. They can come to 27th and San Pedro. We have officers here that are ready to receive them and speak with them and we can facilitate their needs and either direct them to uh, the Fred Rogers Recreation Park, which is where currently we have resources being provided um, in coordination with the American Red Cross, the um, CD9, uh, and the Department of Parks and Recreation. So there are, in, in the coming days, there will be an opportunity for those vehicles that have been parked in the area that have been restricted due to the perimeter. Um, some of those vehicles will be released to their to the owners. So if there's anyone that has been affected by their vehicles uh, or need access to their vehicles, please come to the per to the outer perimeter here, 27th in San Pedro. We can certainly facilitate that as well for the community. Um, I have to thank um, our city partners. It's certainly been a, a unique and trying situation for everyone and we're, our priority is certainly communicating with the community and ensuring that they have everything that they need and their questions are answered and that they are assured that we're here to support and, and maintain protection services for them in partnership with ATF. Thank you. This time we'll take a, a few questions. So who's going to yeah. pay for all this? If, if I, a lot of people are calling us and asking. They don't have a lot of money. They don't have a lot of resources to either pay for a hotel or anything of that sort. So who takes responsibility for the financial burden on these folks? Uh, well, the city is partnering with numerous community-based organizations, and as people identify their losses through the local assistance center, they will be able to find out those agencies that could possibly provide assistance to them. And that includes uh, hotels, uh, the removal yes. of their vehicles, Any food? Yes. Do you have any yeah. people go to hotels, and people at the shelter, people go to hotels, and why some people end up at the shelter? It's a personal choice. The, the shelter is open uh, for those who would like to be sheltered. Uh, some go to other family members. It's whatever is accommodated, most accommodating for those who uh, had to be displaced. Do you know how many I have people a question were, for you, sir. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> what can you tell us about these, these trucks, these container vehicles? Uh, how old are they? Are they inspected regularly? About what, what's involved there? You know, the, the, this, uh, the information that we have is very preliminary, uh, preliminary. In the interest of maintaining the integrity of this entire investigation, will, which will really take a while, you know, that information will be discussed and, and provided to the public at a later time. I think at this point it's really premature to provide any details like that. I currently don't have them, but we must allow the process to, to take its course. And, and I think ATF has talked a little bit about that, that process that they're doing. I think it's important to let that process continue. Do we know what year it came out or anything like that or when it was retrofitted, that sort of thing? 
Yeah, that, that will definitely be part of this entire investigation. I, I personally don't have that information, but um, like I said earlier, that, that, that will definitely be uh, something that will be looked at in very much detail. So uh, that, that part of the investigation, once again, is it, still being conducted. Uh, the, the purpose, uh, especially of this press conference, is really to update the, 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 the public and the media and let people know of the hard work uh, that the different various departments are doing to general, assist. In general, yeah. come across a product, cash, how do you make determinations on whether it's unsafe, yeah. safe, and I'm, I'm really sure that the department, as well in this investigation, that's something that we'll look at in very specific nature. I said the protocols, training, all that stuff. Um, that, I think, once I said, uh, like I said earlier, we, we should allow this investigation and this process to take its course. There's many, many, many details, I think, that the public deserves to know and that we also want to know as to what causes. But we should let the investigation take its course. Any other questions that uh, these yeah, folks can answer? Yeah, especially in charge of the commander, um, how often is the photoconceded vessel inspected? And then secondly, the fact that the door, the lid, really two and a half, three blocks, what does that say about that line? So, I, you know, like I said, that, that, those are details of this uh, investigation that uh, the department will certainly need to, to uh, my apologies, to address. Uh, I. Once again, this investigation will be completely reviewed. I think it's important for us to remember that this is still ongoing and providing details uh, of, of particular, um, you know, about the vehicle, about the training without having the whole picture is really premature at this point. We should allow that process to, to take its course. And and, I don't have that information, sir. That's from three days. I think the public has a right to know something about what happened. I mean, you don't have to give us the details, but, I mean, we'd like, from the ATF, at least, well, we'd like some explanation. Okay. So, so have a right to know let, me, let me address, I think we all know what happened. No, now, we now, no, we now, what happened. now, what ATF is trying to determine is why it happened. We all, knew, we all know there was an explosion that occurred, okay? And we all know that it happened when they were trying to render the items safe or dispose of them in the TCV. So what ATF is going to do is to determine why that happened, why that explosion occurred the way it did. And right now, we just don't have that information, but we're going to find it out. So, is TCV failure going to be part of that, that investigation? Yes. So we're going to go through this scene very methodically over the next several days, and we're going to take in as much evidence on scene as we can. And then it is going to be taken back to our uh, NCDER, the National Center for Explosives and Research uh, and Training, and they're going to make that determination at a later date as to why this happened. But it is, it is going to take some time for them to go through all of the analysis and make that determination. So the truck is going to be moved. Are you going to take the truck away? This is the first time that we have investigated that type of incident here in Los Angeles. Beyond that, I cannot. Uh, I, I do not know right now whether that has been done across the country. But here in LA, this is the first time. So the vehicle is going to be transported from here to another place. Are you going to try to rebuild it? What's, what's going to happen? So that is still to be determined. But uh, it will be moved from here. We just do not know exactly where it is going to go at this point and uh, where we're going to store it. But some, it. some of the science, the metallurgy, I mean, like what actually makes up the structure of the, of the container? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get Are you going to look at how the container, like how it's structured, what the metal is all about? Yes, I believe they're going to go into all of that. Wow. But that is not something that we can obviously get into while we're right here on scene. So hey, it's going to take uh, some time. Thank you, sir. Uh, one last uh, point that Ms. Parks wants to provide. Uh, Ms. Parks, she has some information that you want to share. I just wanted to reiterate for those residents and businesses who still uh, need information regarding services that are currently available, please visit our website, emergency.lacity.org. 
those residents who still need sheltering. Uh, we have a rec recreation and parks facility available at the Fred Roberts Recreation Center. That's located at 4700 Honduras Street, Los Angeles. The telephone number is 323-234-8650. Thank you. That'll be all for today, folks. Thank you. Thank you.